Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have a uh, soldering pen, it says. It's soldering iron, it's the PTS-200. It is all metal, it's all cool, it's the latest of the latest. It is an open source thing, you can change your own firmware. And instead of a raspberry, it is some other fruit or vegetable. And uh, it was sent to me by Banggood. And I didn't work for Banggood for a while because sometimes equipment arrived and broken. Uh, they haven't changed their uh, motors operators. Um, they uh, still send it in just in a garbage bag without any protection. But it seems to have arrived and broken. So let's have a closer look. Well, it looks pretty neat to be honest. And this uh, solder pen. Can, uh, does have support for the T12, TS100 and the TS101 and this is already version 2 so it is one of the latest well, I didn't understand the concept at first and it looks amazing look at this it has a little display right there it looks all aluminium it looks very well made and it says here it can run from 12 to 20 volts, 18 to 20 watts. And there is a USB-C connector here in the back. And it does not have a charge cable. So why it doesn't have a charge cable? Well, it doesn't have a battery, so you need to power it yourself. And you can power it in uh, different ways. But let's first just put it together and yeah, well, I will say it again and it's just, I think it looks amazing. It looks like good quality for sure. And uh, so this is, I think this is the TS pin. I don't know if it is a 101 or a 100, but it looks like a TS pin. But it can also do the T12s. And I think if you use the T12, then... Uh, this is a protection I think for mobile and you can use this one and then the T12s also fit but about how to power the device because it is a USB connector but keep in mind it is 100 watts and that is a bit of a lot it is even a very lot but you can power it in different ways so if you power it at the lowest 18 watt it says here then it heats up in 50 seconds but you need 9 volt 2 amps so this is not your standard USB uh, charger not your old one because that would be 5 and here we have 12 volts and then it can do up to 36 watt but if you use a 15 volt 3 amps then it goes to 45 watts and if you want to use the full 100 watts, that means you need 20 volts by 5 amps. And then it heats super fast, 8 seconds. So that means if you were thinking, wow, this is pretty cool uh, portable um, uh, soldering pen, then you need to think about your adapters. And uh, I was just looking, oh, I have an old iPhone adapter. This one is 5, and if you're lucky, it's 10 watts. It is not enough to power this device. I have here my latest iPhone adapter. It's already made with USB-C. But it is 20 watts and it's great to charge my phone within uh, very fast. But for the soldering pen it is not enough because it's only 20 watts. So then I would be in the lowest scale and then it would take 50 seconds to do. But it is possible and then also it is not necessarily portable because I still need an adapter and your normal cheap cables here I don't think they can handle these 3 amps so you need a special cable also for that but first uh, forget about the cable another charger I want to use it on my desk so I bought this also I think in AliExpress. It's great charging station. I can charge everything at the same time if I want. It uh, I think it is 100 or 120 watts. It is a lot. So you would think, okay, that's enough power. Well, if I look at this smallest connector, I have only one for USB-C. 
it doesn't put all the 100 watts to this single port. No, I think it is 20 or 30 watts only. So still, even though I have a 100 watt charger, it cannot deliver the full the full uh, 100 watts to that single port. So then you almost need to do it already on a lab power supply. And I have seen from other YouTubers, I have seen uh, reviews about this pen and they were actually using a lab power supply. And then somehow it doesn't make sense to me anymore. Why would you do such a very small pen? Why would you use that? And it looks amazing and it's cool because it's open source and yeah, yeah, it's all very cool. But if you need a lab power supply to power this thing, it doesn't make sense at all. But then I was thinking a little bit further, but it is not a cheap solution. I have here a, a power bank, huge, huge batteries. I think it has Panasonic's inside. This one can deliver on one port, but only on the charging port. But it also has an output, can deliver 100 watts. So I can use it portable with this device. But these power banks are not cheap. If you, you can find many uh, power banks for sure cheap, but one that can deliver on one port the full 100 watts, that is a different story. So it is pretty cool then to use this mobile, but it becomes a little bit expensive. Yeah, and then we have the charging cable. So I have here a charging cable. I'm not sure it's for 100 watts or not, but it seems it, it is to charge. There is a charge uh, sign here, so it should be possible. And uh, let's play a little bit first, but you also need to buy a, yeah, more expensive already than just a USB cable you have lying around. Oh, okay, there was enough uh, complaining. Let's just uh, have a look. But I like things to be practical, so things need to make sense. So here we have it. It starts up. It delivers 12 volts here. Let's see if I switch it on. Yeah, 0 0.6. It is heating very slowly. You can see it's only taking 400 milliamps. So yes, that can take a while. I'm really on this board. Yeah, so this will this will take a while. Also, I have no clue how to switch it off because now it is kind of, I think this is a boost setting, but I have no clue how to switch it off. So that is the first thing I will do in my firmware if I make it myself, is this single button that switches it on. It can also be used to switch it off because now I'm in the menu but it is still heating I think okay I'm, uh, the best method now is to to switch it off is just to pull the plug and then put it back in then it resets and it goes back to to off it uh, I never read the manual but I think simple devices like this should not uh, necessarily need uh, one so I find out long push here brings you in the menu. You can change the tip settings, but I already found that uh, the tip that you have is the only one is the TPS. And that is probably to, uh, to have some default settings with the temperature. The arrow plus just gets you into the menu lower and the middle button will always bring you to the next manual. Okay, I am running version 4.5. I checked in the on the website what they put here in the in the box. The Eddy with a, a lot of these. I will leave the link also in the bottom. And this seems to be the latest version. So that is okay. Uh, we have voltage settings. We can see how many power we want. We have some boost settings, I think. Now I'm a bit lost in the menu. Update firmware. If you do this, uh, you connect it to the computer, it becomes a memory stick. And then you can just download the software, put this in this external disk that you see in your computer, and then 
it will update. Uh, languages, it was in Chinese. I will switch it back to Chinese. You can still find the language setting. This is, uh, well, Chinese to me. <laughs> uh, but the language is still in English. So even though it was in Chinese, it was very easy to switch it to English. So well done there. From what I understand, you can set the temperature with the plus and the minus button. And the middle button switches it on. I still don't know how to switch it off. Now the set temperature is to 380. And it says here, heating. If I push again, it becomes boost temporary. But because the power supply, even though it is 100 watts, it just doesn't deliver any more than this. So it will take a little bit for it to come there. Uh, well, let's, let's do this on the battery power bank. Okay, I have my power bank here. One of these ports should be able to deliver 100 watts. This is 60 watts. That's not enough. This is 100 watts. So I put it in here. And I need to switch it off. Yeah, it is on. 92% is enough. So now we should be able to be full power. So how long will it take now to heat? It still takes a while, so maybe I need to change some other settings. Back in the menu, set the voltage again. Yeah, did not store it. Then I need to go return. Hopefully it's stored now. Switch it on. Yeah, now it goes a lot faster. Puff, there it is, and now it says hold. So it was holding it, and we OF. I don't know what it is, maybe just keeping it on its temperature. And we see here it is running now 20 volts from the power bank. So your normal 5 volt charger is useless here, but it heats super, super fast. In that sense, it's, it's kind of nicely portable, like this. So like this, you have a nice portable thing, 100 watts. Well, it is super hot. I can try to solder something with this. Yeah, maybe the concept is better than I thought, but the only downside is, and they don't say that in the, when you order one, that it doesn't have a battery that you need. Well, a very expensive power bank. Okay, let me see if I can solder something. It is all very small. It's more my eyes and oh, it just switched off. That is the problem with these power banks that they don't necessarily like to be on. But it heats like super, super fast. So that is good. Uh, yeah, it's because this power bank, it's on its charge port, because that's the only port that can deliver this super high power. Well, the soldering doesn't feel bad at all, by the way. It, it feels nice, it flows. But this is also not too much mass. But it goes, it feels natural. Okay, now I switch this off again. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, the, the soldering goes goes pretty pretty well. It it feels natural. I'm I'm actually surprised because I thought you will feel the weight of the cable, but it actually is it's not really and if you well I always prefer my Weller and that one also has a cable so it, it didn't feel uh, unnatural uh, unnatural at all and the only thing that but it is maybe a matter of time that I don't like is that it is very difficult to find an adapter but 
of course, that is just a matter of time because first these were 5 watts, now they are already 20 watts. And I looked already in the AliExpress. Yes, you can find them with 80 and 100 watts also. So that will be solved then. But if you think this will be a very nice portable pen, yeah, then you will be disappointed because if you want to use it portable and yes, you can also use it with 20 watts. But if you are outside, especially now it's winter time with 20 watts, you probably cannot even eat it. And so you need that 100 watts. And now it is minus five, I think here. So you, you need that power. And that means you need a huge power bank and not all power banks can deliver this 100 watts. So that's my only point. Let's have a look at the sofa. If you're interested, it is pretty cool. If you like all this, this open source stuff, you can program yourself. And well, a proper on and off button is of course great to have that you don't need to pull your cable every time you want to stop. So let's have a look at that. So I found the website. I think I counted all the letters correct. So it is uh, the Sungyu PST200. Uh, running version 4.5 is the latest right now and it's supposed to run on the ESP32 that is interesting so yeah but you, for me this is too complicated to do this with uh, Arduino so you need to do a lot of Arduino stuff and replay some of the phones so I will not be updating like this I just prefer especially on the solar iron if it works it works but it is good to know there are some uh, open source uh, thing here is the now oh, it's for the board manager oh i'm really not too much into that but i remember when i was programming uh, in the arduino you needed to add your uh, your board extra boards through the board manager and then you need to install special libraries depending on the display that you have well here that would probably be the same because it also has a little display and uh, well interesting if you are uh, into this i will leave it uh, at this oh but that means that i should see a serial port if i connect it to the usb Yeah, it creates a COM port 15. So then we should be able to talk with it with uh, Arduino. Okay. And if you think, well, this review was not that very in-depth, I absolutely agree. Um, I, I don't get the concept too much. Why would you make this overcomplicated computerized pen and then you need an extra cable and you need an extra power adapter or you need to connect it to your lab power supply and then what is then the difference with any other active soldering iron so i didn't get that too much but it is of course great and it is very very well made i i, I like how they just the design looks very nice and it is in a nice box and of course it's pretty cool it is open source and i think it runs on pen os one or two or yeah, if, if you're into this stuff, I think it's probably great. If you're just looking for a, sol an, an, a portable soldering iron, I think there are also other solutions. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.